Hello and welcome back to yet another Mac Deck Tech. I'm Mechanized Minion, aka the Energy King, and today we have another fan requested video. Once again, from RS Newboard. RS Newboard, you rock. Uh, but today we have Corrupted Memories, helmed by none other than Kinnon Corrupted Memory, uh, which is the backup commander from, I think, Jump Scare from the Duskmorn set. Let's go over them, shall we? So, Kinnon Corrupted Memories is a 4 cost 2-2. Two, two. I know what you're thinking. Mech, those stats are bad. Hold on a second. Based on their power, we get to cast a type of spell at flash speed, be it creature or non-creature. And when we draw cards, we're giving them more power via plus one, plus one counters. So, what is our game plan here? How are we going to win with Kinnon? Well, let me tell you. We're doing card draw, we're doing counters, and we're sharing that power. That's our game plan overall. Uh, so let's look at some of these card draw cards. Starting off, we have AC Tyrant of Gyre Strait. Six costs five, five, lets us play an extra land every single turn, which is really nice. And landfall, draw a card. So we're ramping faster, we're drawing more cards, we're seeing more of our deck. We're here for it. Body of Knowledge. So Body of Knowledge is a 5 cost star star. Their power and toughness are going to be equal to the number of cards in our hand. We don't have a maximum hand size while they're on the field, which is nice. And whenever it's dealt damage, we're going to draw that many cards. Playing into the Card Draw Matters Synergy, we are running a Chasm Skulker. 3 cost 1-1 one, one. whenever we draw a card, much like our commander, they're going to get bigger via plus 1 plus 1 counters. When they eventually die, we're going to create a 1-1 one, one squid with Island Walk based on their power. Or not based on their power per se, but based on the number of counters, which is just one less than their power, generally speaking. Following them up, we have Glade Muse. So Glade Muse is a 2-4 beast for 3 mana. Whenever a player casts a spell, if it's not their turn, that player gets to draw a card. So this really encourages us to kind of save our spells to kind of go back and forth. Casting them mainly on our opponent's turn and really taking advantage of the fact that we get to cast spells at flash speed. Sticking with that card draw synergy, we are running Min Wily Illusionist, a 1 3 for 3. Whenever we draw our second spell for turn, we're going to be doing it pretty often. We're going to get to create a 1 1 illusion, who gets plus 1 plus 0 for each other illusion we control. When those illusions die, we get to cast a spell for free based on that illusion's power. Nuzzlehull Primal Tide follows that up a 7-7 seven, seven for 7, which can't be countered, gives us no maximum hand size. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, we're going to draw a card, and we can discard 3 cards to effectively flicker Nuzzlehull Primal Tide to protect them at the end step from any kind of board wipes, anything that would really just sort of, uh, you know, throw a wrench into our machine. Of course, we're running Simic Card Draw, and... So you know we're kind of casting that a little overpriced, but still super good, especially for this deck. Prime Speaker Zagana. So 6 mana, 1-1. One, one. Is going to enter with X plus 1 plus 1 counters, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control. And I assure you, by the time we're ready to go ahead and cast the Prime Speaker, our commander is going to be plenty strong. Well, at that point, we get to draw cards equal to Prime Speaker Zagana's power. So we're effectively doubling our commander's power and drawing just a ton of cards. Tetiova, Benthic Druid. You know them, you love them. A 3-3 three, three for 5 with landfall, draw a card, gain a life. 20 Toad Toad. Try saying that 10 times fast. But they are a 3-3 three, three for 4, so not bad. We have a maximum hand size of 20. It is important to know that timestamps will apply when you have multiple effects that determine the maximum size of your hand. But the difference between no maximum hand size and a max hand size of 20 is fairly negligible in terms of this deck. Uh, but whenever you attack with at least two creatures, the 20 Toad Toad is going to get a plus one plus one counter, and we're going to draw a card. Whenever it attacks, we win the game if it has at least 20 counters, or we have... 20 or more cards in hand. So a nice little alternate win con. They're sitting around like the $4 mark, and I feel like they're going to fit right at home here, you know, with our commander. Wave Break Hippocamp. So a 2-2 two, two for 3. Whenever we cast our first spell during each opponent's turn, we're going to draw a card. So really just, again, playing into the fact that we have flash speed on our opponent's turns to help us out. And it's going to feed us card draw, which is going to affect, you know, how big and powerful our commander is. It's a good time all around. 
Zemeck Guild Mage. So this is a 2-2 two, two for 2. We could pay Simic so that this turn, each creature we have entering the battlefield will do so with an extra plus 1, plus 1 counter. Little nice, little nice. Or we could pay Simic to remove a plus 1, plus 1 counter from a creature to draw a card. So both effects are great. We have a lot of other creatures that are coming in with these counters and ways to manipulate them all the time. So, you know, I think we really have a lot of good value there. Moving into some spell and card drawing, we have Enter the Enigma. So a single blue target creature can't be blocked this turn, which is a nice way to be like, hey, look at my big beefy commander. They're coming to hit you and there's nothing you could do about it. And then also draws us a card, which will beef up our commander a little more. Explore. So for one in the green, we're going to play an extra land for the turn and draw a card. Rich cards expertise. Six mana, draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. So again, very likely doubling the power of our commander. Then we get to cast a spell that costs five or less from our hand for free. So two spells for the cost of six mana, one of which could be up to costing five, the other one being the original spell itself. Plus all that card draw, which also beefs up the commander. Super strong in this deck. Following that up, we have something a little similar in Season of Gathering. So six mana, sorcery. We get to do some paw prints, right? So we get to have five paw prints worth of stuff done. Uh, so we can put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature. It gains vigilance and trample for the turn for one paw. For two paws, we get to choose an artifact or enchantment and destroy it. Or we get to choose rather artifact or enchantment and destroy all permanents of that type. Or for three paws, we could draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures we control. So in my mind, ideally, right, we're passing out the plus one plus one counters to two of our big beefy creatures. They're going to gain vigilance and trample, allowing us to really pack a punch. And we're going to draw cards once again, doubling the power of our commander for the turn. Urban Evolution. So five mana, draw three, play an extra line for the turn. Uh, so it's a little bit of ramp, it's a little bit of card draw, and we're here for both. Of course, we're playing a Simic card draw deck, so we are, of course, playing Windfall. Three mana, everyone's going to discard their hands and then draw cards equal to the greatest number discarded this way. There's a fair chance that the greatest number is going to be our number, right? We have a couple cards in here that give us no maximum hand size. We have a lot of card draw happening to support our commander getting bigger, faster, and really just outvaluing our opponents. But again, you know, effectively getting a bunch of power on the spot for our commander could be pretty deadly. Arcane Denial. It's a counter spell that's gonna let us draw a card. Sure, an opponent's gonna get to draw some cards as well, but we did stop one of their spells. So kind of the least we could do. Of course, we're running Brainstorm. Draw three, put two back on top. I'm here for it. Frantic Search. Three cost, draw two. Discard two, untap some lands. Growth Spiral, so basically a little brother to the urban evolution from earlier. Two mana, draw a card, cheat on a land. Rocking that Midnight Clock. So three cost artifact that taps for blue. Uh, we could speed up the hour counters if we wanted to, but once we have the 12 hour counters on it, we shuffle our hand and grave back into our library, draw seven, exile the clock. So really strong way of just being like, hey, you know, I'm going to temporarily have this extra mana and eventually I'm going to draw seven and me drawing seven is going to beef up my commander by another seven. Prof's Edict Memory. So two cost legendary enchantment. When it enters, we're going to draw a card. We again have no maximum hand size. At the beginning of combat on our turn, if we've drawn more than one card, we get to put X plus one plus one counters minus one where X is effectively the number of cards we've drawn. So, you know, we've drawn two cards, we get one, you know, three gets us two, so on and so forth. Stocking the Pantry. One green mana enchantment. Whenever we put one or more plus one plus one counters onto a creature we control, we get to put a supply counter onto Stocking the Pantry. Then for two mana, we get to remove a single uh, supply counter from it and draw a card. Is it the most efficient card draw in the world? No. Probably not, but I still think it's pretty decent here for the budget build. The Fairy's Ageless Inside is gonna follow that up. So for four mana, we get a legendary enchantment that when we would draw a card, aside from the first card we would draw on each of our draw steps, we're gonna draw two instead. So 
super strong. Everything that has you draw multiple cards is actually several instances of draw a single card uh, based on magic rules to the best of my knowledge. So effectively, hey, double your card draw, which means double how strong your commander is getting every time you're drawing cards. It's all good. Tribute to the World Tree. So Tribute to the World Tree kind of does uh, two things we're looking for, right? It's a three green enchantment. If a creature enters the battlefield, if it has at least three power, we're going to draw a card. Otherwise, we're going to give it two plus one plus one counters. So we're passing out plus one plus one counters to our board of small weenies. And whenever we have anything that's a little large and in charge kind of hit the board, we're going to draw a card for it, which is going to pop our commander. Last of our card draw matters is wizard class. So single blue to play, no max hand size. Again, we love this. For two and a blue, we can level it up and draw two cards. Then for a four and a blue, whenever we draw a card, we get to put a plus one plus one counter onto a target creature we control, which could be our commander to just effectively double up on that effect, or it could be any other creature on our board. We could spread the love around a little bit. Entirely up to you based on the game state you find yourselves in. Let's move on in to some plus one plus one counter synergies. We're in Simic, we're doing plus one plus one counter stuff, we're running Simic at Ascendancy. It's very possible in my mind to basically play this, play a big draw spell, have the 20 counters on it, and it's like, cool, remove it by next turn or kill me or I will win, right? How much enchantment removal is your pod playing? Probably not as much as it needs to to be able to deal with this on the spot. Hydra's Growth. So Hydra's Growth is an enchantment for two and a green. It's going to enchant the creature, give it a plus one, plus one counter. Then at the beginning of your upkeep, it's going to double the number of counters on that creature. So again, really just makes our commander shoot up in terms of like how strong they are. Hardened Scales, single green. Basically just a little bit of extra plus one plus one counter synergy on top. So just a little extra one, but still pretty good. Hadana's Climb. So this is three mana, one in a Simic. Beginning of combat in your turn, you get to put a plus one plus one counter onto a creature of your choice. If that creature has at least three counters, you transform the Climb into the Winged Temple of Orozka, which taps for a mana of any color, which is fine. But really we're here for the second part, which is for one in a Simic and tapping it. Our target creature you control is going to gain flying and plus X plus X for the turn, where X is its power. Again, how much flying, how much reach is your pod playing? Probably not enough. Court of Garen Brig. So two and, or one and two green, rather. Enters you become the monarch. A little bit of card draw. We could have actually technically hit on this during the card draw section. That's okay. Beginning of your upkeep, you're going to put two plus one plus one counters on up to distributing them to one or two creatures. And then if you're still the monarch, you get to double those counters. Um, so super strong for us. Branching evolution, uh, basically a doubler for your creatures. Uh, so for two and a green, if one or more plus one plus ones would be put onto a creature, twice as many instead. Ozolith, the Shattered Spire, one and a green, gives out just one extra, but still pretty nice. For one in the green, you could put a plus one plus one counter onto a target artifact or creature. Uh, we could do that at sorcery speed. We could also cycle it away for like, oh, I really don't need this. I'd rather have the card draw. I don't think it's going to often happen, but, you know, situationally it could. Zimone's Hypothesis. So three and two blue, you could put a plus one plus one counter onto a creature. Then you choose odd or even. You're going to return each creature with the power of the chosen quantity back to hand. So are we bouncing all even powered creatures? Are we bouncing all odd powered creatures? Depends on our board state, but we're basically always trying to protect our commander. Ripples of Potential. So Ripples of Potential is an instant for one in a blue. We're gonna proliferate, which is good for all of our counters. Then we get to choose any number of permanents who were affected by that proliferation and phase them out, which is amazing, right? It's gonna protect us from a board wipe. You could even use it. Again, you know, odds of it are probably a little slim, but someone goes to blow up your Simic Ascendancy because you're gonna win with it. Oh, I'm gonna ripples of potential. I'm gonna proliferate. We'll give it another counter. I'm gonna phase it out. Beginning of my turn, it comes back. Ah, I just hit upkeep. Guess I win. 
Repulsive, Mutation, X and Simic. You get to put X plus one plus one counters onto a creature you control. Then counter a spell unless that spell's controller is willing to pay mana equal to the greatest power among your creatures. Odds are the greatest power among creatures we control is our commander. And it's going to be way too much mana. It's effectively, yes, that spell is countered. Inspiring Calls. We actually could have just done this for card draw as well. It's where we probably should have done it, but that's okay. <laughs> a lot of things fall into multiple categories in this stack. So it's like, well, it could kind of go either way. But Inspiring Call is two and a green. We're going to draw a card for each creature we control. It's a plus one, plus one counter on them. So again, really raising the power of our commander. And those creatures are going to be indestructible. So a little protection for the board. Wave Goodbye. So two and two blue, we're going to return each creature without a plus one plus one counter to its owner's hand, really clearing the way for our big beefy boys to just sort of swing freely and crush our opponents. Varel of the Whole Clade. So one in a Simic, one four for Simic and a tap because it double the kind of counters on target artifact creature or land. You know, we're basically doubling up our commander's power every single turn with it, and we're here for it. Kami of Whispered Hopes. So... Two and a green, one, one. Gives out an extra one, plus one, plus one counter whenever a counter would be given out to something. And taps for mana where X is its power. So starts off with just tapping for one, but as we're passing out counters to things, it's going to tap for that much more. Colonian Hydra. Three, two green, enters with four counters on it. It is a trample boy. Whenever it attacks, we double the number of plus one, plus one counters on each creature we control which you can imagine is going to get out of hand pretty quick. Forgotten Ancient, three in the green, zero three. Whenever anyone casts a spell, he gets a little bigger. At our upkeep, we get to redistribute those counters. Evolution Witness. So three mana, two one, with adapt two for two. Whenever one or more counters are put onto it, we get to return a permanent from grave to hand. And we could basically control when this is going to happen. We have a lot of ways of passing out these counters. And, you know, I think we're in for a good time. Last of the direct plus one plus one counter synergies is our Evolution Sage. So three mana, three, two, Landfall Proliferate. Kind of here for it. Now, we actually don't have a ton of ways to directly share the power. Uh, but our big one here in the deck is Overwhelming Stampede. Five mana, all of our creatures are going to get plus X, plus X Trample, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control. And... You better believe this is a haymaker. We're taking everybody out at once. The next thing leads us down into some honorable mentions, things were just a little too expensive to include and tell everyone to run out and buy, um, but are good nevertheless, right? If you have them, use them. So we'll start off with Bruce Lee Bill. He's like a $30 card. Uh, some places he's going for as much as like 45. Two mana, landfall, put a plus one, plus one counter onto a creature. Five mana, double the plus one, plus one counters on each of your creatures. Super strong. If you have it, run it. Crater Hoof Behemoth. Uh, so, again, it's like a $35 card. It's just too expensive to tell everyone to run out and buy. But effectively does the same thing that the Overwhelming Stampede does for us. Triumph of the Hordes. Four cost. Every creature you control is going to get a plus one, plus one trample infect. And again, with how big our board is getting from these plus one, plus one counters... Odds are you're just killing the, the, the whole table at that point. The Great Henge. So, again, just too expensive. Uh, looks like it's sitting around like 50 to 70. Um, but it's mana ramp, it's life gain, it's counters, it's card draw. It's literally everything we want, but it's too expensive to tell everyone to run off to go pick it up. Of course, you know what you love it. It's the Ozolith. Again, too expensive. 35 bucks, but a good way of being like, hey, if you remove my commander, you slowed me down, but I'm certainly not out. As soon as I bring them back out, the Ozilith is going to pass those counters back out for me. In Keeper's Talent, a little over budget in terms of like keeping it around the $10 mark. It's, it's around like the $12 to $13 range right now. But each of the modes uh, for this class are great. Uh, but as always, I'm Mechanized Minion, the Energy King. If you enjoyed the video, felt like you got a little bit of value out of it, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Ring the bell to ensure you never miss an episode. Consider joining the Discord. There's always a link in the, uh, the description down below. But until next time, good luck with your builds.